Hello, I'm Roger with CoderU, and in this video, we're going to be discussing documenting JavaScript code with JSDoc. Why documenting code is important. So when working on teams, a well-documented project can help reduce the time that it takes for someone to be productive and be able to contribute. It gives insights and context to the purpose of code being written so it can be used by Code Assist tools. It can be used to automate building API documentation when used with continuous integration and continuous de delivery workflows. So this will kind of be uh, important for the uh, commercial sector because a lot of the uh, a lot of people prefer having code automatically generated as opposed to let's say having code documented in uh, two different places because over time the documentation can end up becoming out of sync so uh in the, we'll actually be discussing a little bit of, more about this later when i give an example showing how we integrate uh automated uh code generation with gitlab ci so the simplest way to document code is as simple as just describe the purpose of the function. By adding a comment tag right before a function lets developers and code assist tools know what it does. So as you can see here, we have a function called foo. And we're describing this as this is a description of the foo function, just by adding the comment block right above the, the function. So we can use JS tags or JS doc tags to actually give more detail and description as to what the function does. So here we have, so JS doc is more of a standard that's been picked up by many editors to help implement code assist functionality like in Visual Studio Code or Atom. Code assist tools are sometimes included, but others, it can be added through plugins. So here we have a uh, function book. So this represents more or less of a, a class definition, but in kind of the older style, non ES6 way. Okay, so we're defining, we're adding the JS doc tag that defining it as a constructor. And then we're saying that this book has two parameters, okay, which is of type string, a title and the author. So and then all we're doing here is we're basically taking those parameters and storing it within the object. So return values can be defined as a JS doc tag, which can inform a developer what values to expect back when it is called. So as you see here, we're adding two functions, get title and get author to the book prototype. And then we're basically just returning those values that we stored internally in the constructor. And you see here, we just have the JS doc returns tag that says we're returning a string and it's the title of the book and then the author of the book. Another example of using JS docs to define the function uh, accepts a value of type book, which is the class, it would be kind of the class instance itself and then returns a Boolean value. So as you see here, we're defining the param. When we're actually, we'll start over here. We'll say, okay, this is the book. We're creating a new is equal function, which will be a prototype of book. But then we're saying, okay, up in the comment block, we're adding param of the type will be book. The value will be uh, the book as well, lowercase. And then this is our description. And then we're saying that we're going to return a Boolean value, which is going to be whether or not the, uh, the book, the two values in the book are equal. So we're basically going with the premise here that it's innocent till proven guilty. So we're defining is equal is true. And then we're doing a comparison here uh, against the title. We're using strict comparisons because we want the type and values to match as well. So if neither of those, if there's an issue with either of those elements, then we're saying that, okay, you, this is not an equal object. Okay, so then we're doing the same comparison with author and we're using on the book uh, object, those functions we defined earlier in the previous steps and then just returning the result at the end. So more information about uh, JSDoc and what its capabilities are can be found 
on the jsdoc.ab website, which is the main page that created the standard. Uh, they have a list of all of the tags that they have uh, created and defined, along with examples as to how to use them. So let's jump over here. This is what their website looks like. And they, they have some, some good introductory articles on how to use it as well, um, along with a list of block tags. So these are the tags that we kind of use. We already used a couple of them. Like, for example, here is um, constructs or constructor. Let's see, constructor. Yeah, there you go. So class, synonyms, constructor. And then we all, there deprecated is a good tag to use as well. If you're not using a function anymore and you want to migrate people over to using a different tag or a different function, I mean, then you can basically add deprecated with some sort of message. That way it'll pop up in their editor or and in the documentation. So you can always visit the JS doc website and they'll and get more details about all this. So let's jump back and now we'll go to the demo. So here I have a sample project uh, with a few files. So here we have book as defined. And you see like we basically have the, the whole examples that we were using in our uh, slideshow here in the file put together. And now so over here you can kind of see in the index.js we're including the class book and then we're defining it. We're saying new book. And when you hover over this, the, the, the class itself, you can see how we have information here that is relevant to what we're trying to code for. And you can see it says, here's our description, represents the book, it's a constructor. And then here's our two parameters. And then up at the top, you can see it says title, string, author, string. So that way you know what, uh, what values that, this function is expecting. Okay. Then when you go to, to is equal, you see here we're accepting a variable which will get will be called book internally, but it's of class book. Okay, and it'll say this is the book that we're comparing to. This is the in, the information on it. Okay. Um, so if we go ahead and run this, we'll say npm start. You'll see in the first line here, we're actually creating, we're instantiating a book and we're calling this my first book with me as the author, Roger with Coder U. Then we're creating a second book, my second book is the title, uh, same author. And then what we're going to do with book three is we're just going to copy book one and store it to book three. So as you see here, we're just going to run the is equal function and compare book one to book two. And as the results showed here, this is not the same because the titles are different. You go back to the code, you take a look at the is equals, and this condition is going to be what failed. So now we go to the next comparison. It's saying comparing book one to book three, which we basically just copied the variable. And you'll see it, out, it displayed that it is an actual, it is the same book when we compared it. Now, uh, JSDoc, as you might have seen in the documentation earlier for the JSDoc website, does support documentation for ES6. Okay, so here we have a class A defined as e uh, with ES6 notation. So we were defining a static get template function, uh, which will we, we will basically be using the util format in get string to replace the variable value which will be passed in through the constructor and we'll just replacing it with the percent s okay so here's the constructor we do in this instance because it's es6 we don't have to add the constructor tag to it we just we can add it uh well we just say okay here's the class with the class description here's the constructor description along with the parameter and we're saying hey we have a default value here so this value is actually optional and not required and along with the string description and then here we have the the function get string where we're putting everything together we're using the format method to replace the percent s in our template with whatever value is stored within the class okay Next, we have class B. 
Class B, as you can see here, we're actually adding the extends uh, tag for JSDoc to say that class B extends class A. And this will help when generating the documentation, which I'll show you here in a moment. But the only thing that we're wanting to change in here is that we're just wanting to change the template. Okay, so we're just going to be using a different template string for our value. Okay, so now we'll go back over here to index and you'll see we have class A. Class A shows. And as you can see here, as opposed to book, if you see in book, we have title string, but in class A, it shows value question mark. Okay, so the question mark is basically to let the developer know that, hey, this parameter is optional. Okay, so we're saying create an instance of class A to templatize the string replacement. And then you're seeing the param value there is defined as the string to inject in the template. If we go to class B, uh, you can see because we didn't create or we didn't uh, define a constructor in class B, it is going to show us the documentation for the class A uh, definition. So you see here we have the notation creates an instance, instance of class A to templatize the string replacement. So as you can see here, we're, we for class A, we pass world as the, as the value. And then when we actually spit out what the get string was from console to console, you'll see it says hello world and not the percent %s sign. Same would go for the class B. But this time we're using the different template. So it's saying hello world world. Okay. So in order to generate the documentation, we'll jump over here to the package. And I actually created or installed the JS doc uh, library from NPM. And to use it, to use the, to build the documentation, we basically say run the JS doc uh, plugin. We're going to output the documentation to the pu a folder called public. Uh, the dash R basically says we're, we want to recursively loop through any folders that may be in this uh, lib directory. And the, and the lib directory is going to be where we want JS doc to look. Okay. The dash capital R is going to be basically include this readme on the front page of our documentation. So you see here we actually have some uh, markdown where we kind of have some information about uh, this project. So when you when you go and you basically execute it by doing npm run build documentation. Okay, so now if you take a look, now we have a folder called public right here. So let's take a look at that. Here's our public directory. And then let's open index. Okay, as you can see here, we have our readme that was in markdown now as HTML. Going on the right side, you'll see we have our three classes defined, book, class A, class B. So if you let's click on book, and if you remember, book was defined using the, the old style uh, uh, way of creating objects or classes. So going back to our uh, documentation, you see here that we have uh, book as, cl as a class with our two strings as the parameters and our descriptions. Okay. Here is our auth our function get author, our other function called get title. And what's really nice about this is this allows you to identify where these functions are defined within the uh, within the code. So that way you don't have to hunt, you know, as to you know like where exactly it's at. This tells you what file it's in on what line. And at the very bottom we have our is equal function which shows here's our parameter book of type book. And what's kind of nice about this is as you can see this is a hyperlink showing that this is a reference to itself. So that way if you reference any other classes this will you can click on this link and it'll take you straight to that class. And as you can see here we have our return type of boolean. Okay. So for class A, you can see here, 
Here's our parameter. And now we have in the documentation our default. So it says default is world, showing that this value is optional along with our description. And just like in the book example, we have our documentation as to the get template, what it does, and get, uh, get string. Oh, and as you can see here, you can see it, it actually put the attribute that this is a static function. So if we go to class B now, which is basically an extension of class A, you see here that it actually says that this class B class extends class A, which you can click on to go and see the, that documentation there. But as you can see, we inherited, see the get template is defined in class B, but then you can see that get string is pulling from get string in class A. So next up, we'll be kind of discussing as a bonus uh, how to automate building these kind of uh, documentations on the go. So I have here, I, this code will, and, and the example will be available in GitLab. So um, a link will be provided in the description below. And this is a basically a, a GitLab CI script where we're basically telling it, okay, build the documentation run these commands, then build it. And then we want to create an artifact uh, out of the public directory. Now, what's going to be important if you decide to use GitLab CI to handle your documentation is that the target has to be named pages and your path has to be called public uh, in order for it to be published automatically to the internet. So now let's go back over here. And I've already done that. And as you can see here, we, I have a URL for the documentation. It was already provided for me. So let's go back and this is, this will be, this repository link will be again in the description below. So keep an eye out for that. But you can see here, we have a nice little check mark saying that the pipeline passed. And if you go into it, you see here is our uh, continuous integration step where we defined pages. And then as you can see, you click into it and it shows it executed the command there that we provided. And then it created the, uh, the artifact where you can kind of browse through. You see there's our public directory with our documentation. Then with, the, with GitLab, it provides GitLab pages, which basically allows you to automatically deploy. When this pages step is successful, it'll deploy that automatically to its own internal servers where then you can get your own domain, your own uh, path to be able to see this documentation itself. So um, it, that's pretty much it for this video. So if you like what you see here, feel free to like, subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. Till next time, have a good one.